Welcome to K. Elizabeth Toasts, a podcast celebrating people who increase our quality of life. I'm your host, K. Elizabeth. Each episode is a heartfelt interview of a remarkable person making lives better. Give a listen if you are in need of a dopamine hint, or if you like toast, because this toasts for you. In this episode, we talk with Mark about economic stability. Have you heard of the the social determinants of health? No. Okay. The social determinants of health are economic stability, access to health care, access to education, um, social and um, com- like community. And then there's also neighborhood, like built things in your neighborhood. Anyway, the social determinants of health is all with the intention of having systemic change, right? So addressing um, systemic racism, um, poverty, right? It's like a systemic change. I want to be real clear. Systemic change is necessary and needed. It makes big impacts. But I'm interested in individuals and what individuals are doing to impact those social determinants of health. And I think that you impact other people's economic stability with some of the things that you do. Um, I don't think I know you do. And I wondered if you would talk about some of those things. So right now, I don't do much, to be honest. Yes, you do. But in years past, I agree a lot with what you're saying. Oh, well, then we're going to have a rich conversation yeah. because you absolutely do. So, for example, I think about the work that you do on Meals and Wheels. Mm, yeah, that's my favorite. Love it. That's the highlight of my week every week. Seriously? Dead on serious. Tom absolutely love it. I it's meals on wheels. My grandparents like used to live out in White Bear Lake. Yep. And visiting them, my grandpa once a week would deliver meals on wheels. Okay. And a couple of times as a kid, but a young kid. Yeah. Going along with him and delivering his meals on wheels. Mm-hmm. It was always a good experience. I mean, it was kind of neat. What do you do? Ten forty five on a Wednesday morning. I I drive it over there. Man, there's great ladies. So they don't have a like a kitchen there. Their commissary kitchen is like South Minneapolis, further out. Mm-hmm. Um, which I tried to volunteer at, but they never contacted me back. <laughs> um, anyhow, so yeah, so they don't cook or prepare the food there, but they get it from the commissary where they make and they're, they look like TV dinners, to be honest. But they're much better than that. Okay, much better. I mean, like. I want to say it was a salmon bowl last week, a salmon garlic bowl, maybe. Wow. With salmon and like garlic and uh, red peppers. And then on the other side, I had like green beans, maybe. Forget. And then there's a chilled bag that goes to each person, too, with like milk or juice and a cookie and a couple of other little like things. But then they, they back and pack it. Okay. With like a, just like a TV dinner, right? Yeah. But then they heat them at the church. Oh. So you're delivering and they have these like, they have these really nice like corduroy bags that someone's sewn up. So you kind of have like a little homemade bag that you deliver to them. And it's really neat. But it's fun. But then you show up and they, it's like their visit for the day. So you get a visit and I say hi to the dog and you get to know them as the same people each week. It's a yeah. lot of fun. So that's like now, now that I got my own group. But when I first started, like a year or two ago, I was just filling in. Mm-hmm. And then I was doing, they also do like weekly deliveries. So people, some people get, like especially the elderly, they get a meal visit every day. Because then you have someone mm-hmm. checking on them as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, But some people, they opt for a week of frozen food delivered. Oh. Many people with steady work still don't earn enough to afford the things that they need to stay healthy, including, of course, food. If you make 15 or $20, whatever the minimum wages are now, yeah, and you have one or two children at home, yeah. they, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not realistic. It's really not. And... At least having the something delivered to give you a little bit of a foundation or kind of stability each week so you yeah. have something to fall back on. Yeah. 
allows them to especially immigrants allows them to kind of move up or at least kind of reach out or kind of expand out a little bit yeah but also a, like a safety net or foundation right yeah yeah so you said this is uh that that Delivering for Meals on Wheels is actually one of your highlights for your week. Love it. Absolutely love it. I why really do look forward to it. Why do you love it? I like the interaction. I like I like I like giving back. I just like it's good to feel part of a community where you're like not only just taking or living in it, you're kind of participating and helping. That's always a good feeling. But more on a personal level, it's just feels good. Good. I enjoy talking to some of these people. I mean, yeah. So one guy, he actually gets a frozen bag each week. His dog's name is Ella. First time I met Ella, <laughs> big, big, like bulldog. First time I met Ella, she's got a, a tie on, she's walking around the house. <laughs> like a human tie or like a, a human, dog? A human, a human tie. A human. Okay. But he didn't have a tie too tight, but he definitely yeah. had it on. He would, had put on an Ella. But this guy, he's, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's some, he's probably about my age, maybe a little bit older, mm -hmm. mid-50s, late 50s, very artistic and very personable and yep. interesting guy. And I just, I enjoy talking to him. It's someone out of my normal network or normal yeah. social bubble that I wouldn't normally interact with. And I really enjoy it. Yeah. And there's other people like that. There's, a, there's an older lady, Gloria. And I don't know. I wonder. I mean, I kind of always envisioned maybe at one point she was an opera singer or something. I mean, she's just kind of a jubilant, big personality. And yeah. She just, she takes a little bit to kind of talk to her, but then she's like just happy and she's yeah. just smiling. And that's cool. That's awesome. I like it. One of the things that just continues to stand out to me is how much people get when they get to give. Um, yeah, I agree. hundred percent, I agree. Yeah. hundred percent. If I remember correctly, you used to volunteer at the food bank. So, yeah, I've been doing out in Hope there. They have like a distribution center. Yeah, New Hope. It's like it, it's like the backbone of like food banks and stuff where they collect and then distribute. So tell me more. That's exactly what I want to know. Usually, going out there for like before the holidays or before the winter or something, and it's a good system. But they they package up like boxes to deliver to people with like staples, so that if they get snowed in or something. They have food to rely on if they can't get like meals on wheels or something else to deliver, or if they can't oh. get out to one of the local food banks to get food, mm -hmm. they have a stockpile of food at the house to make it through the winter. Um, oh, cool. It is cool. It's a, it's a, but also they do like other just distribution where they they collect the food from where you get the groceries. Or yeah. Something. And, you, and then they have the bags of like pre-bag food that you yeah. can buy one and they donate it someplace they donate it to the, these distribution places oh okay so we've gone through and you like open up these bags or staple clothes yep to then sort through the food that are in the bags so that yep. they can then i don't know deliver them out to the food banks and stuff like that and then do you you sort them and then do you actually put them on the like no, shelves, no. so we just we just palletize them usually mm -hmm. in like different like green vegetables or mm -hmm. canned fruit or whatever it may be just palletize them sort them that way and then when they distribute them out it's easy for them to like on the bigger to just grab yeah. these and make these boxes yeah. so that's more. where you're taking from these pallets and building like a like a winter emergency box or whatever it might be yeah but they then give to someone in need that relies on a food bank or relies on meals on wheels or something and if we get a lot of snow they're not able to leave the house and then they've got something they got the substance yeah the back okay. neat so how did you find out about it oh i think i just was looking i, I got time on my hands and <laughs> started looking around at places to volunteer i've always volunteered something yeah somewhere 
being new to the area. Yeah. Yeah. So when I started talking about economic stability and then I said, yeah, Meals on Wheels, and you're like, oh, oh, yeah, I used to do something more about that. What, what oh. were you thinking about? Oh, so I've always like volunteered at like a food bank or something. Mm-hmm. I guess what I was thinking was I had a, a chief engineer's merchant marine license for the U.S., for the U.S. Coast Guard. I I did just different types of ships. I worked for BP up in Alaska for a year and a half or so on oil tankers, did some government ships, did just like some regular ships. Um, and then probably in 2001, 2002, started working with this company called Liberty Maritime. They would run ships from almost all the way to the Gulf Coast. Mm-hmm. So they were taking PL-480 cargo, which is public mile 480 cargo, which basically is in order to subsidize and maintain um, commodity prices in the U.S. for like bulk grain or mm-hmm. cooking oil or anything like that, the government would buy a surplus or yeah. buy yeah. a certain amount. And then instead of destroying that commodity to maintain the price in the U.S., they would then ship that commodity overseas mm-hmm. and donate it as U.S. food aid. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so we would take that cargo from usually the Gulf over to the Middle East or Africa. They'd have maybe, I'm thinking of, I don't know, your Eritrea or Djibouti or something like that. They'd have a couple hundred people bagging this grain up, and it would take them like a month to bag all the grain up and carry it out and distribute it. Anyhow, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Yeah. So you also, I don't, I don't even know, I, you build things for fundraisers as well. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. The story is, so my cousin, his parents... Now him, now that his parents are pretty much retired, my aunt and uncle, but they were supporting or they do support the Minnesota, University of Minnesota's Children's Hospital. Yeah. And they've built this, not just them, but other restaurateurs in the area created two different fundraisers each year. They were doing wine barrel. They do wine barrels at this one where they get the wine barrels donated. Yeah. And then you create something out of the wine barrel and then they auction it off. Well, so I volunteer. I didn't volunteer, but I said, hey, I'd like to make a wine barrel. The first year I made a coffee table and a, like a garden fountain out of the wine barrel. And then last year I, well, I made a a roller coaster. Did you, you didn't see? I did not see that. Yeah, I made a no. roller coaster that went in and out of the wine barrel with like this garden growing up in the middle of it. It was really beautiful. And it came out and they like weaved in and went up and down. Okay. So you make this Ooh. and then you it's donated to a fundraiser. So what is the money for these fundraisers? What does it go to? Mainly for research. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Research and supporting the family. So I have two more questions for you. Mm. Um, one, is there anything else that you want to share? I, for me, I think it's, I think this is the way to do it. I think it's the individual person finding what they enjoy, mm-hmm. but also the fact that they're actually out there doing it rather than donating money to a charity or something. And they're so removed from anything. It's good to not insulate yourself from that. It's good to experience it and yeah. to be on the same level as who you're helping rather than to kind of be remote and yeah. write a check or use Apple Pay or whatever it is to donate a couple bucks and feel like you're contributing or helping. But you're... 
Any ideas or suggestions on how someone might find something that would align with them to do that work? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I think it's just getting outside your safety safety bubble and yeah. move safety zone a little bit and kind of taking that step and forcing yourself out. But I mean, I like we were talking earlier. I mean, I've reached out to so many people. Mm-hmm. to volunteer not not even in minneapolis but over the years mm-hmm. and it's amazing how many times you get turned down hey so there's a mm-hmm. there's an outfit out there i reached out to them multiple times to volunteer and they said no thank you they turned me down multiple times twice couldn't believe it yeah very surprised but even here like we were talking earlier multiple times trying to get them meals on yeah, the roads. has an interesting message of don't give up you can volunteer <laughs> <laughs> right so do do you like sourdough bread where did you get it from yeah oh yeah i'm sorry yes this toasts for you <laughs> <laughs> so in the spirit of recognizing what you're doing to other people this is your toast oh <laughs> i took a bite before we toast it I'm no sorry. problem no it's perfect that's perfect it's good it is good yeah i really like it now it's time for your toast i want to raise a toast to my husband matt who makes my coffee for me every single morning never missing a day and makes it just how I like it with half milk and half coffee. Matt works really hard. He's at a very busy, high demand job all day. And he comes home and he's completely hands on with our two little kids in the evenings. And no matter what, he still makes me my coffee every single morning. Whether we're at home or on vacation somewhere, if he only got five hours of sleep the night before, and he'll make it even if he has a really stressful day coming up. Matt always takes the time to make me my morning coffee, just how I like it. And so here's a toast to my husband, Matt. Thank you for everything that you do for us and for the best coffee in the world. Now it's your turn. Record your own toast for consideration in a future episode at ketoasts.com. Thanks for joining us. And if you haven't already, go toast up some bread. Every positive action is worth toasting. I'm a whole episode? Oh, yeah, you're a whole episode. Very curious. Oh, cool. We had no clue that you did a podcast. I don't yet. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Healthy People 2030 started in 2020. Trump was in office. Where where did it come from? (laughs) It came from wild grain. It's like slow fermented sourdough, Mm -hmm. and they ship everything frozen. Oh, I didn't repeat it. I just heard it advertised somewhere because they were advertising they do croissants too. Their croissants are incredible. Yeah. Anyway, I love bread. I do too.